Uh, tell me a little bit about the excitement and the anticipation for you to see Major League Baseball coming back online. I think for us, it's basically Christmas and New Year's and Black Friday all rolled into one because you have you're going into, frankly, the next six weeks of an incredible amount of sports leading up to NFL returning. So it's going to be a summer like none other. Kelly mentioned the $80 million that you're putting back into your customers accounts. You know, I opened up my phone the other day and I saw, oh, FanDuel has uh, deposited $10 in your account. Why do you need to do that if there's such demand for sports betting? And how do you plan to get a return on that investment? From our one, thank you for having our app on your phone. I really appreciate that. Um, but two, <laughs> it's all about saying thank you. You know, we actually have an ad campaign running now. It's all user generated content about all the great things fans were doing to get each other through this period without sports. And from our perspective, what we wanted to do was to give a big $80 million thank you to the fans out there. And this was our way of doing it. How bad has this been for you? The pandemic, the complete lack of sports or people uh, betting on ping pong and racquetball and uh, Korean soccer? So we have the broadest product offering of any of our competitors, including big businesses and online casino, as well as online horse racing and poker. And frankly, while our sports business and our fantasy sports business were slower than we would have expected, the horse racing business, the poker business, the casino business were growing far faster. And so as a business, you know, we weathered the pandemic really, really well. Our team also was incredibly creative in creating free to play games and running Madden simulations that people could have a fantasy lineup on and in a number of ways just to, they were free to play, but there were ways that fans could engage with sports. And so from my perspective, and particularly relative to a lot of the businesses that have seen real challenges, we can't complain at all. And I'm really proud of how our team did. You know, Matt, it strikes me when you look at the, um, the effect of the pandemic on tax revenues, state and local, they are in such a cash crunch. There's going to be such a need to try and find new streams of revenue to support government programs. Could this boost your opportunities by seeing other states adopt sports betting that haven't yet, to see more liberalization in terms of mobile gaming, and especially, and, and I know you don't talk about this a whole lot, you spend a lot of time talking about sports, but there's this whole casino business that brings in a lot of money um, and, therefore, and therefore sport um, tax revenues as well. Are you gonna see more states looking to adopt that because of the pandemic? We absolutely think so. Um, and really, to your point across the board, I think from a sports betting perspective, you've now had legalized sports betting for two plus years. States are seeing that it's a great generator of tax revenue. It's also something that enhances consumer protection as well as enhancing game integrity because we're putting the illegal market out of business. And so it's really a win-win all the way around. And then they're also seeing in states like New Jersey and Pennsylvania, the size of the online casino market. And so we are getting a lot of inbound interest from legislators to accelerate um, passing laws and in states that we frankly never thought would have a chance or would be much slower to adopt for all the reasons that you're describing, both fiscally, but as well as the positive experience that many states have had so far with legalized sports betting and legalized online. You know, Matt, I think over the next two months, you're exactly right. We're going to see sports like we never have before. There's going to be a collision of all of the major sports in the, in the United States, including uh, professional soccer. I'm just curious, as you rank those sports in terms of the betting revenue you pull in, how do they rank and, and what is the relative rank of them? In other words, is the NFL the biggest and the biggest by a factor of three over college football, over NBA, over baseball. Take me through that a little bit. Sure. So if you look at it over the course of a year, actually sports like baseball and basketball tend to be bigger than football, but that's largely because the number of games that are played. Interesting. Um, if you look at the number of active players, NFL is by far the most popular sport. Almost everybody that bets bets puts a bet on the NFL at some point during the season. Um, if nothing else, they do it on the Super Bowl. So, you know, from our perspective, um, I would say baseball, basketball, and football are largely kind of equally important, um, but just for different reasons. I think one of the situations that we're watching is obviously whether or not college football gets played 
um, this fall yeah. just because that's obviously hugely popular um, with a number of people. And you know, from our perspective, it's obviously one of the most challenging to, to play in the current environment. And Matt, which would be the worst baseball team for you, for FanDuel, to end up in the World Series? So uh, to win the World Series, uh, the Mets would actually be the worst. Um, and so this far out, basically, you know, it's the Mets, the Pirates, and the Yankees, which largely just goes to show that people bet their hometown favorites um, this far yeah. out. But yeah. you know, from our perspective, you know, if the Mets won and we paid yeah. out and lost a ton of money, you'd have so many happy New York fans that we would be more than happy to write those checks. <laughs>